what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Welcome to a special edition of Higher Ed Pulse. I'm your host, Mallory Wilsey, and we're live at the 2024 AMA Symposium for the Marketing of Higher Education, bringing you conversations directly from the floor with thought leaders, innovators, and industry change makers. Let's dive in and check the pulse of what's happening right here at the symposium. Hello, everyone. So excited to be with you again. We are at AMA Higher Ed, and I am joined with the lovely Kinsage Paul. We are talking about all of the great takeaways that she's had from the conference. But first, kick it off and tell us about your presentation today. Thank you, Carrie. First of all, for obviously this is an audio episode, but we are both matching in pink and I love it. I present it today and whenever I present, I do like to wear colors, so that's my thinking there. My presentation today was about an unbundled and unconventional approach to building a brand. This was really about finding ways to be resourceful when you don't have the resources to embark on a major brand initiative and how you can decouple and uncouple the various components of brand building and make a case for it as you get results in the marketplace. So it was sort of a different way, uh, an opposite way of doing things, but it worked for us and that's what we wanted to share. You know, and I suspect it's not so dissimilar from a lot of institutions that their dollars are tight, their resources are strapped, having to get buy-in for this big ask to do this brand work, sometimes the answer is no. And so it sounds like you found a way to kind of get creative and to do that in a little more segmented approach to get you there. Absolutely, and maybe that's why we had a pretty full house because some of the sessions that I'm noticing that are pretty full are the ones that talk about doing more with less or doing some things on a shoestring budget, you know, you name it, and those are the sessions that are filling up. And so it's pretty prevalent in terms of all the things that we need to do and not have the wherewithal to do it. But yes, I think what I tell my team all the time too is when we don't have resources, we have to get resourceful. And creativity and innovation is really at the heart of everything we do. And so let's get creative and innovative with this as well. So I'm curious, is there a takeaway or two for our folks who are listening who maybe didn't get to be at the conference? One or two things that you tried in that approach that worked that they might be able to apply in their own work? Sure. So we had a list of 10 takeaways at the end um, that I told the uh, folks in the audience that if you, if anything to take away from our presentation, those would be my highlights. The couple that I'll touch on, one of them would be try and pilot. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes you just have to let the market speak and react and give you the data instead of spending a lot of time kind of deliberating and working through things where it almost gets watered down. If you have a hunch and if you have a gut of what something should be, but you don't have the resources to build it into something that is big and comprehensive, go with what you have, and then adjust as you need to. I love that, I love that. And one of the things that you said a minute ago is when you don't have resources, sometimes you have to get resourceful. As you've been thinking about the conference and the sessions that you've attended, what are the sessions that have stood out for you where folks have done just that? Yeah, so I've gravitated to a lot of the leadership sessions and the ones that were recommended as a senior leader track. I think the ones that resonated with me the most are really where people are encountering some of the same challenges that we do at our institutions, but they approach them differently because mm-hmm. what works for one institution obviously does not work for the others. But by the same token, some of the things that they encounter as things that we have encountered as well. So for me, that really helps open my eyes to kind of the world of possibilities and allows me to continue to do this creative thinking that I alluded to before is, okay, this worked for them in this institution. Let me try this a different way in my institution. So for instance, somebody talked about a 
a very um, inexpensive way of doing inbound marketing and lead generation. And I'm thinking like, okay, they worked with a partner and a vendor to do that. And like, part of me is like, well, this is a resource I could use a chatbot for, right? And yeah. and I mean, you have to know more about how they did that to understand how a chatbot could take could do the same thing. But that's something I'm going to explore now. Is is again being resourceful and seeing that okay, the same concept. Let's not use another product. Let's see what we have within our ecosystem. So we already ha have a subscription to a chatbot. Like how could that kind of give that level of personalization, for instance, that yeah. this session was about? Well, and to your point, and then you pilot it. And, and you so then pilot it. And you know, academics love research, but they also love testing and they love data, right? And that's what they teach is, is they have a theory, mm -hmm. right? They start with a theory and they either prove it or disprove it or there's no resolve. And so it's like, okay, I have a theory and here we're going to set out to see if that we can prove it or not for our institution. I love that. I love that. One of the things that I talk a lot about is training that next generation of leaders. You know, there are so many people that have worked so hard to get seats at those tables. And how do we make sure those folks coming up in the ranks behind us are prepared mm -hmm. for when their opportunity gets there? So as you were thinking about your team and your team development and the work you're doing, what are one or two pieces of advice you might give for those future leaders and those rising leaders who are listening of how they can be preparing? Observe and take it in because I think everybody has something to share. They just don't share it very publicly, like come to a conference and maybe make a presentation out of it. But even if you engage in a conversation, like Binti Harvey, Right, she's the one of the OGs. I just talk to her one on one every time I meet her, like for ten minutes, and I get I just soak it all in because already I feel like I'm going to be a better leader because of what, because of the time I spent with her. And the other thing is, and I and this might sound like a broken record, but you just got to try it. Got to take risks and try yeah. it, and at your level, wherever that level is, is to lead something, lead a project, lead a, you know, leadership does not always mean having a seat at the cabinet level, right? Yeah. Leadership is much broader than that. So take ownership and ask for that ownership of a project or an initiative or even a problem for which there's no solution at the moment and try and work that out with, with your team or, or ask your supervisor if you could have some resources to kind of figure that out. And that is the preparation perhaps for what you think you're capable of doing. And that will prove it to you that you are in fact capable of doing that. But because the mere fact that you thought about it is in and of itself a big deal in my yeah. opinion. It's quite brave and courageous. courageous. Um, and then, you know, when you are in that role uh, eventually, then you know that you are really going to be rewarded, not in terms of rewards and recognition, but results. I love that. And so that mindset shift about just working toward results, I think it's a little harder for people to grasp because you, as you're progressing through your career, you're so used to getting rewards and recognition and or recognition, I would say. But then when you reach a certain point, the results is what it it's all about and you kind of have to make peace with the fact I mean maybe the other things come or not come but you have to make peace with the fact that that may not come yeah such good advice <laughs> well thank you so much for your time today and it has been a great AMA conference we've got another day tomorrow so lots more sessions to check out but thanks for your time Ken have a great day everybody thank you so much The Higher Ed Pulse is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our show helps higher ed marketers and admission pros find their next big idea and features a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. 
Learn from Brian Gross, Eddie Francis, Jenny Lee Fowler, and so many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.